The Lady Amalfia closed her hands on the parapet and wished for him to come to her, for she knew now that King Hagard was mad. Below them lay the thin, sallow beach and the rocks and the rising tide and nothing more. "I like to watch them. They fill me with joy." The childish voice was all but singing. "I am sure it is joy. The first time I felt it I thought I was going to die." There were two of them in the early morning shadows. One was drinking from a stream and the other was resting her head on his back. "I thought I was going to die. I said to the Red Bull, 'I must have that. I must have all of it, all there is, for my need is very great.' So the Red Bull caught them one by one. It was all the same to the Bull. It would have been the same if I had demanded tumble bugs or crocodiles. He can only tell the difference between what I want and what I do not want." He had forgotten her for the moment as he leaned over the low wall, and she might have fled the tower then, but she stayed where she was, for an old bad dream was waking all around her, though it was daylight. The tide shattered on the rocks and tumbled together again, and Prince Lear rode along, singing, "'But I will love you for as long as I can, and never ask if you love me.'" "'I suppose I was young when I first saw them,' King Haggard said. "'Now I must be old. "'At least I have picked many more things up than I had then, "'and put them all down again. "'But I always knew that nothing was worth the investment of my heart, "'because nothing lasts. "'And I was right, and so I was always old. "'Yet each time I see my unicorns, "'it is like that morning in the woods.' and I am truly young in spite of myself, and anything can happen in a world that holds such beauty. In the dream, I looked down at four white legs and felt the earth under split hooves. There was a burning on my brow as there is now, but there were no unicorns coming in on the tide. The king is mad. He said, I wonder what will become of them when I am gone. The Red Bull were will forget them immediately, I know, and be off to find a new master. But I wonder if they will take their freedom even then. I hope not, for then they will belong to me forever." Then he turned to look at her again, and his eyes were as gentle and greedy as Prince Lear's eyes became when he looked at her. "'You are the last,' he said. "'The bull missed you because you were shaped like a woman, but I always knew. How did you manage the change, by the way? Your magician couldn't have done it. I don't think he could turn cream into butter. If she had let go of the parapet, she would have fallen, but she answered him quite calmly. My lord, I do not understand. I see nothing at all in the water. The king's face shivered as though she were looking at him through fire. Do you still deny yourself? he whispered. Do you dare deny yourself. Nay, that's as false and cowardly as though you were truly human. I'll hurl you down to your folk with my own hands if you deny yourself. He took a step toward her, and she watched him with her eyes open, unable to move. The tumult of the sea filled her head, together with Prince Lear's singing, and the blubbering death wail of the man named Rook. King Haggard's gray face hung over her like a hammer, muttering, It must be so. I cannot be mistaken. Yet her eyes are as stupid as his, as any eyes that never saw unicorns, never saw anything but themselves in a glass. What cheat is this? How can it be? There are no green leaves in her eyes now. Then she did close her eyes, but she shut in more than she kept out. The bronze-winged creature with a hag's face swung by, laughing and prattling, and the butterfly folded its wings to strike. The red bull moved silently through the forest, pushing the bare branches aside with his pale horns. She knew when King Haggard went away, but she did not open her eyes. It was long after, or only a little while later, that she heard the magician's voice behind her. Be still. Be still, it's over. She had not known that she was making any sound. In the sea, he said. In the sea? Well, don't feel too bad about it. I didn't see them either. Not this time or any other that I've stood here and watched the tide come in. 
but he saw them. And if Haggard sees something, it's there." He laughed with a sound like an axe falling on wood. "'Don't feel bad. This is a witch castle, and it's hard to look closely at things living here. It's not enough to be ready to see. You have to be looking all the time.' He laughed again, more gently. "'All right,' he said. "'We'll find them now. Come on, come with me.' She turned to him, moving her mouth to make words, but no words came out. The magician was studying her face with his green eyes. "'Your face is wet,' he said worriedly. "'I hope that's spray. If you've become human enough to cry, then no magic in the world.' "'It must be spray. Come with me. It had better be spray.' 